So we're starting up our new chapter, the integumentary system. I think it's chapter five in your textbook. And our computers are down today, so my notes are going to be really hideously ugly. Um, so the integumentary system includes your skin, hair, nails, and your body membranes. And you were supposed to do, on page 43 of your interactive notebook, you were supposed to do a DLCE of the body membranes. Do I have the page right? And today I give you a half sheet to color. And on page 44, you were supposed to do your Cornell notes on your body membranes. And that was the first, um, that's from the beginning of the chapter up till the very first set of Cornell, um, not Cornell notes, of quick check questions. Okay? So, uh, we just talked about how if, went the wrong way. What happened to it? Oh, it's gone. That's so weird. I just wrote and now it's gone. And I'm recording still. Okay. That's odd. It shouldn't have gone away. Okay, those page numbers are up there. Do you want me to write it again? 43 is our DLCE of our body membranes. And there is a figure... In our textbook, it's figure 5-1. And then I also gave you a half sheet today. Page 44, this is where we're going to be writing right now, is our Cornell notes on body membranes. Page 45 in our interactive notebook, it's going to be the video notes. On, um, it's a video called a series called Body Atlas, and the first episode is skin. On the back side of that is a worksheet of skin disorders, and there's a word bank down at the bottom. 46 will be your Cornell notes, starting with um, the big blue heading called the skin. It says the skin. And it goes through the structure of the skin, and you will continue on until you get to accessory structures of the skin. And that's, where, that's all I've given you for your um, table of contents. Okay, so as we were just talking about, if you set up your Cornell notes, you obviously have the title for your Cornell notes up at the top. So our title today would be Body Membranes. And we'll take notes here. And then over here on the left side, you're going to make a vocab list that is specific to that section. So in your textbook, if you, you want to grab your textbook, if you grab your textbook and you look at the end of the chapter, you see the purple box? It's on pages 104 and 105. Okay, on pages 104 and 105 is a list of all these words. And if you try just to learn these words just as a list, um, it's going to be more difficult than I think if we keep these in the context of the lecture and we identify them and use them in class in the day that we talk about them. So on your page 44 of your notebook, okay, that's the page we're on. These are the words from that big purple list that are going to pertain to the lecture that you have on page 44. So you're going to copy these words down. I pulled these words off of this purple list. And as we do our lecture today, we're going to talk about them. And when you go back and you review... You're going to want to make sure that you know what all those words mean. So take a minute and copy them down. Resuming our recording, you've copied down this list now in your Cornell notes on the left-hand margin. And they're alphabetical, but we're not going to address them in an alphabetical way. Um, make sure you add this word, mucocutaneous junction, and I'll try to touch base on it. So 
I, I want these to be somewhat organized, but I'm going to have to start over at the very beginning because I did not write them down organized at all. So we have two categories of membranes. We have epithelial membranes. Okay, come on right now. Yes, epithelial. And connective tissue membranes. Epithelial membranes are made out of epithelial tissues. That's why they're called epithelial membranes. We have three types, cutaneous, which is basically our skin. We have serous membranes, which we're gonna talk about in a lot more detail. Um, but the serous membranes are the ones that line our pleural cavities. Which is around the lungs. I'm trying to do this kind of in an outline in some organization without like numbers or letters. So the pleural cavity and the peritoneal cavity. which is your um, abdomen, including your gastrointestinal, so GI tract, gastrointestinal. And lastly, we have mucous membranes. Our connective tissue membranes are just our synovial joint spaces. We're gonna spend our time really talking about um, today about these. That's what we're gonna focus our discussion on today. All right, so we're gonna focus on our serous membranes. And in order to do that, I'm first gonna start out with a really, really simple analogy. If you've ever gone to Disneyland, they have these really cool balloons there. It's like two balloons in one. So there's one balloon and then inside of that one balloon is like a Mickey head. Have you ever seen those? I know this is like horrible drawing. It's a balloon within another balloon. Okay, the outer balloon is, is clear and then the inside Mickey head will be a color, okay? We're gonna refer to the Mickey head as, um, I'm sorry, that is really disturbing me because it's a really poorly drawn Mickey head. This Mickey head is gonna be the organ. And in this sense, we're going to refer to the organs as our viscera. our organs or our guts. So like if you're watching The Walking Dead and um, they attack somebody and they start just like ripping their guts out, they're eviscerating the person. Or if you have ever seen Braveheart, at the end of that movie, they kill him by cutting open his abdomen and literally just pulling out his intestines and, until he, in, leads to death and dies. It's a horrible way of being killed. So here, our organ represents our Mickey head, and we're gonna look at the layers around the organ. And so first of all, we're gonna talk about the membrane that touches the organ. So I'm drawing it here in yellow. Okay, so this membrane here touches the organ. So in this sense, we call it the visceral membrane or the visceral layer. So that's one of our vocab terms, right? Right? Yes. And then we have this other 
outer layer that lines the cavity. So this space here is the cavity. And this is the layer that lines the cavity. <coughs> and so this is called the pleural layer. No, I'm sorry, not plural, my bad. Parietal. Okay, so we have our um, sample here, a non-anatomical sample. So now I'm going to draw just a really simple torso. That would be an arm. There would be an arm, another arm right there. And the dividing line between, actually it goes the other way, loud class in the hallway. Our dividing line between our upper cavity and our lower cavity is the diaphragm. Okay, this diaphragm is the dividing line between our upper cavity and our lower cavity. And so now I'm gonna draw Okay, so what do we call, um, what organs would we find inside each of these? What would we find in there? Lungs, Lungs cool. Good. Okay, so those are the lungs. So I'll label it lung. Okay, this one here that I just underlined, which lung is that? The right lung or the left lung? Oh, nah. left, left, left. It's the left lung. What? Remember anatomical positions from way, 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 way back? Yes. It's the patient's right, not the doctor's right. Left and right is the patient in reference to the patient. <laughs> I did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys say right and I wrote left? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Jeez. Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> Uh-oh, I failed the surgeon's test. There, the right lung, and this is the left lung. There, it's the patient's right, not the doctor's right. Oh my, you guys are paying attention. Thank you. Oh my God. I probably said right and I wrote left. That's how confusing it can get. So like when I broke my ankle and they were gonna take me into surgery, the surgeon came in, talked to me before surgery and he had a big blue Sharpie marker. And he goes, okay, so you broke your right ankle. And I'm like, oh yeah, look, it's all wrapped up. You know, I was on drugs. And he colored in my big toe with the blue Sharpie marker. And then he put a big blue X on my knee just to make sure that they knew that that was the ankle, not that they couldn't tell. But like when my mom had her mastectomy, um, they came in to pre-op and they said, you, were, you know, we're removing the left breast. And she said, yes, because, you know, from the outside, you couldn't tell which one had the breast cancer in it. And so they put literally a big X on her chest over the breast that they were going to remove with the mastectomy. So just to make sure that they don't remove the, you know, the one that didn't have the breast cancer in it. All right, so we have the right lung and the left lung that I totally messed up, so sorry. Now that's captured forever, forever that I messed that up. Um, and we're gonna look at the layer that covers the lung. So I'm sticking with the same color context that I used before. The layer that covers the lung. So this upper cavity is called the pleura. The lung is in the pleural space. So what do you think we would call that membrane? It's the one that's touching the organ. 
Visceral pleura. Good. Okay, visceral pleura because it's touching the organ. And I used a, a pink color for the other one, right? Which, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it like red because it, it needs to stand out from the... So the, the name of the layer... Ah, oh, screen. The screen faded on us, hold on. Maybe it just went to sleep. It just went to sleep, thank you. Okay, so the layer that lines the cavity what do you think we're going to call that? Parietal. Parietal what? Nope. It's a parietal layer, but look where it is. It's in the pleural cavity. So parietal pleura. Okay? Because it's in the pleural space. Got it? So now this next one will be easier. Down here we have um, uh, esophagus comes down. We have the stomach coming down, small intestine, right? Mm -hmm. And then it curls around. It goes and it goes large intestine. Large intestine comes up and goes across and back down. Okay, and this is your gastrointestinal tract. We have our outer layer of the gastrointestinal tract that covers the organs, okay? What do you think we call that? The one that covers the organs. Visceral something, right? Okay, and this lower cavity is called your peritoneum. I think I spelled that right, peritoneum. Did you say you had a question? Did you have a question? No? Oh, I thought you said a question. Okay. So visceral peritoneum, because this is the peritoneum, the abdominal cavity is the peritoneum. And then what would we call the layer that lines the cavity? Parietal. Parietal peritoneum, good. I think I, sp I spelled it wrong, T O. Oh God, I'm, my brain is just gone. This is a real, I want to spell it parietal peritoneum, P E R I T O N. E U M. So I misspelled it here. I'm just batting a thousand today. You know what batting a thousand means? What's a what's a good batting average? Okay, so what that would be an epic batting average. Oh, what how do they how do a uh, 300, right? That uh, 300 is really good. That means you hit the ball 30% of the time. Yes. That's what it means. And so when you say batting 1000, that means that I'm hitting the ball every time, 100% of the time. Yeah, it is. It's very sarcastic. That is such an ugly picture. Okay, visceral and parietal. Do you guys understand the difference now? Visceral and parietal. It, as ugly as it is, the layer gets its name from, is it touching the organ or not? Is it lining the cavity? And is it in the pleural space around your lungs or is it around? So visceral is touching the organ and then parietal? Uh-huh, parietal is, is lining the cavity. So visceral is touching the organ. So if it's touching the lung, it's visceral pleura. If it's lining the lung cavity, it's parietal pleura. 
So then we had a couple of diseases mentioned. Pleurisy is one of them. Pleurisy is an infection of the pleural space. What is the pleural space? The pleural space is the line in between the lung and its lining. It's not a big amount of space, just a little bit of space because when you breathe in, your lungs inflate inside of that cavity and you, um, they have to be able to expl expand. And so there's a, a liquid in there, a, a gel, a, not a jelly, a gooey lubricating liquid. If you get pleurisy, it becomes really, really thick and sticky and it is incredibly painful every time you take a deep breath in. So it's not an infection inside of the lungs. It's in the space outside of the lungs, inside of the pleural cavity. You can also get an infection, which causes an inflammation of the peritonitis. I'm sorry, I just said it. An inflammation of the peritoneum, and it's called peritonitis. So anytime you see itis, that means an inflammation up. So if you have peritonitis, it's an inflammation of the peritoneal space, all this space out here, usually caused by a bacterial infection. So you guys have all heard of an appendicitis, right? Yes. Okay, an inflammation and infection in the appendix. If it goes untreated, your appendix can rupture. And when it does, it would be spewing out bacteria into the peritoneum and you would get peritonitis. If you had um, a perforated bowel and your intestines were leaking out into the space, you would develop peritonitis. Itis means inflammation. So appendicitis, inflammation of the appendix, tonsillitis, inflammation of your tonsils, and so on. You said, what's the definition of pleurisy? Pleurisy is affecting the pleural space. Okay. Peritonitis is affecting the peritoneum. Okay. And they're both mentioned in your textbook. Okay? So that's where I'm going to stop today, and I'm going to give you a chance to catch up with some notes, okay? And then we'll resume on Thursday after the career fair, okay?